examination of the shoulder in examination of the shoulder history plays a very important part physical examination signs of multiple pathologies can overlap multiple pathologies can produce same signs as positive so a very important part for shoulder examination is to take a proper history whether it is a dislocation chronic acute we will go into the details it is important to find a proper history as examination findings can be overlapping this occurs because there are multiple structures present around the shoulders multiple tendons present around the shoulders which are merging and joining at various points in their course some join closer to the insertion other joins away from the insertion so because they are all joined to each other the physical examination findings can be overlapping because of this anatomical fact and that is the importance of taking a proper history for shoulder patients the clinical and the radiological examination builds on the background of a proper history in the history one must find the age of the patient there are certain pathologies will present at certain age and one usually sees the dislocation problems in the younger age and cuff related problem in the later stage of life when we see a dislocation occurring in a 15 years old it can be a traumatic and that is an important part to find out at a when a dislocation presents at a very young age of 15 years very common age for traumatic dislocation is between 25 to 40 years of life is the first episode in most of the traumatic dislocation one tends to get cuff related problems which are traumatic purely traumatic cuff tears are good so usually seen around 40 years of age usually adhesive capitalitis or stiff shoulders presents between 40 years to 60 years that is a very common age of presentation degenerative cuff problems start in the 6th and the 7th decade of life and uh, arthros arthrosis related shoulder arthritic problem are also in the later parts of 70s and 80s so by and large a broad rule of thumb is uh, younger age dislocation later age cuff pathology this is a usual uh, uh, reason for presentation at different ages another factor when we look at the history should be whether the onset was acute which occurs in traumatic episodes in in calcific tendinitis or in septic pathologies other problems which are chronic are usually degenerative cuff problems or adhesive capsulitis which have a chronic onset in presentation the type and referral of pain one must find out from the history most of the shoulder pains are around the shoulder areas referring commonly to the insertion of deltoid most of the pains are limited above the elbow any pain going below the elbow is usually having a pathology probably starting in the neck rather than in the shoulder so be wary of calling any pain coming into the arm coming from the shoulder so it can be a neck problem rather than a shoulder problem coming to the history of in a when a patient presents with a history of dislocation one must look what was the cause of index dislocation was it traumatic was it a significant trauma how was it reduced was it reduced in a hospital was it self reduced and how many dislocation has the patient had does the patient ever get dislocation in sleep and a very important history to ask in dislocation patient is history of epilepsy so these are the factors one must look when a patient has presented with a dislocation these factors influence the treatment course for this patient coming to the examination one must examine the patient most of the things are examined uh, when the patient is sitting there are certain tests which are done when the patient is lying down one usually starts from behind it is important to disrobe the patient to be able to see the arm and in uh, proper this is one of the methods is to have the upper part of the body exposed and that is important 
uh, one must remember that some of the patients might have had a recent episodes of pain due to dislocation or are still painful one must try to avoid pain as in all orthopedic examination one proceeds with the standard format of look feel move and then one does the special test same protocol one follows even in shoulder examination so most of the time we start from behind coming to the look part as i have just mentioned undress and visualize both the both the shoulders the head neck and upper part of the trunk should be visible when doing the look part of the shoulder examination one must look for any muscle wasting which can be in deltoid supra uh, spinous infraspinous or even in the folds so one look for muscle wasting one can look for okay and one can if there is a muscle wasting of deltoid due to paralysis from axillary nerve one can get flattening of the contours of the shoulder in extreme cases even the acromion becomes visible um, which can occur only when in extreme, the bony prominences they start becoming visible so coming to examination while looking uh, one has to look for asymmetry for the level of the shoulder which can occur in polio or it can occur in a sprangel shoulder or it can occur in kyphosis and scoliosis so the level of the shoulder one must look one can look for deformity which can occur in a acromioclavicular joint dislocation one can see prominence in the acromioclavicular joint area where the lateral end of a clavicle becomes prominent one can look for wasting uh, one can look for winging of the scapula from behind and also one looks for swelling and of the subacromial bursa one may see very rarely in large cases and in cases of large rotator cuff tear some of the swellings becomes more easily visible in the subacromial space one looks for any 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 exostosis around the shoulder scars and sinuses if they are there are seen also while examining the patient one must be aware that a shoulder is a very mobile joint and most of the pathologies are due to a good amount of mobility in the shoulder as against stability it is natural shoulder is inherently unstable so it has more mobility if there is stability the mobility would be less like in hip where the contours of the acetabulum restrict but in shoulder the humeral head is resting on a much smaller glenoid so shoulder joint has mobility because there is no bony restrictions the stability is provided by by cause of the soft tissue however if there is an hyper elastic soft tissue it manifests very commonly in the shoulder as it is shoulder has much is a highly mobile joint if the patient has hyper elastic joint it adds to this mobility and that is the reason for some of the pathologies becoming more apparent in shoulder due to hyper elasticity one must look for hyper elastic joint in every patient of the shoulder and it is important specifically in shoulder as the point i have just explained to you one can look at the thumb how much one can take it backwards one can look at the mp joint one can look at the hyper extensibility of the elbow one can look for forward flexion by extending one can see how much forward flexion one has got or how much hyper extension of the knee if it is there can be done these points are important specifically in shoulder but they affect other joints also but shoulder being mobile as it is is affected more by this hypermobility uh, reasons than other joints one must 